There are a lot of Arch-based distributions out there. It used to be all the rage to try to make Arch Linux just a little bit easier to install. And even now that Arch install exists on the Arch ISOs, there are still distributions out there that attempt to make Arch Linux either easier to install or just to install Arch Linux in a different way. And they've all developed and evolved in interesting fashions. Like they've all offer something just a little bit different than Arch does. Either they make it easier to set up or they put provide some post install scripts or something like that in order to make Arch Linux just a little bit better or just a little bit different. So today what we're going to be doing is talking about a distribution called Arch Labs. Now Arch Labs is a distribution that is meant to emulate the look and feel of Bunsen Labs from back in the day. Now if you weren't around back in the day and I honestly wasn't around when Bunsen Labs was still a thing so I'm not quite sure what Bunsen Labs looked and felt like but apparently there's a following of people who are interested in that look and feel who decided to move all of that look and feel to Arch Linux. So that's basically what Arch Labs is. Now, as I usually do in these distro first looks is I try to answer three questions. What is it? Who's it for? And is it good? And honestly, I never get those in the right you know, order because I answer them all over the place. But those are the three questions that I try to answer. So that's what we'll try to do today. So first, what is Arch Labs? Well, I've already kind of talked about it. It is Arch Linux, but with a look and feel inspired by Bunsen Labs. Now, according to their about page, which I'll show you here, they say that they have moved away a little bit from the Bunsen Labs look and feel. So they say now that Arch Labs has become established, we have developed our own look and feel. We have kept true to our legacy by keeping the ISO images as minimal as possible and adding only core applications and utilities. So as we'll see here in a minute, that last part is very important. This is a very, very minimal distribution. You are very much in control of what is installed on your system right from the get-go. And I honestly kind of like that. It's very much a empowering kind of thing when you are in charge of installing the stuff that you want to do. But it doesn't take it so far as to be something that you have to know how to do because there are systems in place during the installation that allow you to install packages that you want to install and you don't have to worry about any actual knowledge of how to do that, at least quite yet. Now, I will say, because th they don't pro proclaim this as a new user distro, so they are actually saying right in their first paragraph on their website that this is for intermediate or advanced users. So, despite the fact that the way I see this is an easier way to install Arch, that's not the way the developers see it. So, I don't know which way I would go in terms of how I would define this distribution in terms of who it's for. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. But overall, it does seem to be more catered towards people who have used window managers before. And the reason why I say that is because all of the quote-unquote desktop environments that they offer, they're all window managers. Now, you guys know me, I'm a window manager guy, and that makes me very happy. There are not a lot of distributions out there that are just window managers. Usually, they all offer some kind of desktop environment, whether, you know, GNOME or Plasma or whatever. Arch Labs only offers window managers. So let's go ahead and jump into the installation. The installation is probably the most interesting part of this entire distribution because they do things in a little bit different ways. Now, obviously, there are other distributions that install like this. They use an NCurses like installer. I'm not sure if it's actually using NCurses because it's not blue, but the look and feel of the installer looks like NCurses. And basically you just go through the installation step by step by step as you'll see in the B-roll. And what I like about this installer is one, it's very nerdy, so you kind of get some nerd credit for using it. But also, unlike other distributions that rely on an NCurses-like installer, so like Void, it doesn't require you to have a ton of extra knowledge. So if you've ever installed Void this way before, there's a certain period in the void installer where you have to choose between what groups your user is a, you, is a part of, right? And if you don't have any clue what a group is in Linux, that section of the void installer is really hard for you because you don't know which ones you're supposed to choose. And the problem is that that step in the void installer is really, really important, right? If you don't give yourself access to those groups that you need, certain things on your computer might not work. You might not have access to external hard drives. You might not have access to sound. You know, any of these things could be possible if you don't know what you're doing. 
With Arch Labs, there's nothing like that. I will say that it does require a modicum of knowledge about Linux in terms of what each step actually does, because it doesn't have a lot of explanation for what each step is supposed to be doing. But it does have a blurb at the top of each little screen, and it allows you to get a sense of what it's doing, but it doesn't explain it in depth. So it does require you to have some knowledge of what Linux is and how it installs, and maybe even how Arch installs itself. So you go through, you select your keyboard and your locale, and you create your user, and you give it a root password, and then you can select between what window managers you want. So they offer... DK, which I believe is going to be their default, usually their defaults are at the top, and DK is at the, D, at the top. They offer DWM, i3, BSPWM, and Openbox. I think those are the ones that they offer. I chose to install several of them because that's just the way that I usually do things because I want to install everything. So I, I installed several of them, and it worked just fine. And then dur somewhere during the process of installation, you are also given a screen of packages that you can install. This is a selection of the most popular packages on Linux, things like Audacity and Vim and Emacs and uh, GIMP and all this stuff. There's maybe 30 or 40 different packages that you can choose from. And obviously this is not the entire bre breadth and width of the Arch Linux repositories being offered to you, but it, the most popular applications are there for you if you want to install them or have the installer install them for you, I should say. And this is our first indication of just how minimal Arch Labs is because if you select nothing on this page, you're not going to get anything, right? You're going to get the window manager that you chose and any absolutely essential utilities to run those window managers. So you'll get a terminal of some kind. So if you just installed DWM, just for example, you'd get ST installed, you get DMenu so that you could use you know, a launcher or some kind. And that's pretty much it. Now, there are some other utilities that it comes with, which I'll show you here in a minute. but Base install, if you select none of those applications in that one screen, you're going to get very, very few actual applications installed, and you'll have to do that post-install. Now, personally, I really like distributions that offer this functionality. So distributions like Arco and other distributions like that that offer you a screen somewhere during the installation that allows you to choose what applications are installed once your installation is finished. I think that that entire process is really good, but I don't think that it is user friendly at all because you have to know what those applications are. You have to know what you need in order to actually do this. So user friendly, I, I shouldn't say user friendly, I should say new user friendly. So that's more important. It is actually user friendly. It's not new user friendly because you have to have some knowledge. And that's kind of the theme throughout this entire installation. You have to have some knowledge of how to do this right and what you're doing right it doesn't require a ton of knowledge like it would if you're just installing arch linux the old-fashioned way or if you're installing gen 2 or linux from scratch or whatever it doesn't go that far but it's a level of knowledge needed more than what you'd get if you're just in, using a calamari's installer or the ubiquity installer or whatever so it, it sits somewhere there in the middle so that's the installation so let's actually go ahead and take a look at Arch Labs now that I have have things installed. So, so like I said, I installed all of the window managers. And if you install all the window managers just like I did, you'll find that they all look pretty much identical. And they've done a good job of keeping the look and feel fairly symmetrical across all of the window managers that they offer. So you're not going to see any garish or over-the-top theming here. It's just a basic window manager. Now, this particular one is called DK. Now, I've never actually used DK before, but that's what this is. Now, supposedly DK is similar to DWM, and that's as far as my knowledge of DK actually goes. So, if we actually go into the configuration file here, you'll see that it is actually a window manager that is configured in a shell script, similar to Herp Slough WM or BSPWM. Both of those are configured in some kind of script. It doesn't have to be a shell script, but you get the idea, right? You you can configure this inside of a, of, of a shell script, and that's what's provided for you by default. And the default look and feel is all configured right here. So if, if you are going to get into this particular window manager, this is where you do all your work. Now, I don't have any opinions whatsoever on D the DK window manager. I have no, I know nothing about it. 
Uh, this is the first I've actually heard of it, as far as I'm aware. I'm, I, I mean, I think I maybe very vaguely remember trying it out once, but if I, it was like a pass through, like I've never actually spent any time in it whatsoever. Now, according to this, what I'm seeing right here, it uses lemon barb. So does that mean DK doesn't come with its own bar, or is that just a, a part here? I'm not actually sure. So again, I have no knowledge of of DK whatsoever. But if we were to log out and show you one of the other window managers that I installed, so I think log out is super shift X, super sh super sh alt shift Q. Yeah, there we go. Now, oh, during the installation, I forgot. It does allow you to choose between different display managers. I chose lie. Uh, but it also does allow you to just log in to, to your system via a TTY, so you could use StartX, or you could use LightDM. Those are the three that it op that it gives you an option for. So let me choose that show you what BSPWM looks like. So this is what BSPWM looks like, and forgive the wallpaper that just changed, just messed up when I changed the resolution. You get the idea. They all look just like this, basically. Some of them have a menu. BSPWM happens to have a menu, so I'm not actually sure. Yeah, this is still ST, and I think this, the default configure the default zoom for ST is Super Shift Page Up, but that doesn't seem to work, or not Super Shift Control Shift Page Up, Control Page Up. No, none of those things work. Uh, so they've either changed that or I'm misremembering. It's e either one is possible. So if we go into our configuration for BSPWM here and them into uh, BSPWMRC. There's not a ton of stuff here in terms of the configuration, but we can see they're actually using Tint 2 as their panel. So this is Tint 2, which I've never actually used on any of my configurations before. This is a very, very minimal configuration of BSPWM. It's There's nothing wrong with that, obviously, but they've done... And, and that runs through basically all of their window managers that I've tried. I've tried i3, I tried the BSPWM one, I've tried DWM, which I can't find the configuration for. I'm assuming it's in slash OPT, I didn't actually end up looking. And I've tried the DK one for a little while. And they're all relatively minimal when it comes to their their configuration files. So the, the longest one is actually, I think, DK, outside of what I'm assuming what the BSP or the DWM the DWM one looks like because that's just going to have all the source code and stuff in it, uh, but they're all very minimal and they all look basically like this. Some of the bars bars are at the bottom, some of the bars are at the top. So the look and feel are all basically the same no matter what window manager you're in. Uh, one thing that I will say is that the the key bindings across window managers are not the same. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the super key is super. Sometimes the super key is alt. Which one it is really depends on which window manager is. In BSPWM, the super key is super. Uh, why they decided to change between window managers, I'm not exactly sure. That's It was kind of confusing me. But I don't think that they expect people to install more than one window manager. So it probably doesn't matter for most people. So if we hit Alt-P, we'll actually see what is actually installed here. So we're going to control over or control uh, tab over to D-Run. And you'll see that there's some stuff here that's pre-installed. So some of the stuff I installed. So uh, I chose Firefox, I chose NeoVim, and I think I selected Rofi. Actually, Rofi was already here. Uh, there was a third one that, oh, Ranger was the third thing that I chose to install. Those are the things that I installed during the installation. Also, NeoFetch, I installed afterwards. Other than that, everything here is what you see is what they would have out of the box if you chose none of the things during installation. So the customized look and feel, this is actually an XFCE feature. So if you wanted to change the GTK theme, this is what you would use. You could also change the icon theme from here, the mouse cursor theme from here as well. Now, what's interesting is that they use this instead of LX appearance, which is what most people use when it comes to managing these types of things. So it does have some of the... XFC backend, although that does seem to be about it when it comes to what's actually considered XFC. Everything else is not here, so you don't see it like the settings manager or anything like that. It has uh, X term and then as Rofi, which is what you're seeing on screen now, it does come with PyCom pre installed. And oh, I also I chose to install Alacrity, that was a, a me thing. Other than that, that's literally it. It has HTOP installed by default. So if you wanted to see what HTOP would you know look like, that's what HTOP looks like. That's literally it. 
that's all there is to Arch, Lin or Arch Labs Linux. And the reason why I keep stumbling over the whole Arch Labs thing is because if you go into a terminal here and do NeoFetch, if you can spell NeoFetch, which I can't. Wow, NeoFetch? Ne <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, you can see it, it shows you. It looks, it, it says it's Arch Linux. It doesn't say Arch Labs. It says Arch Linux. And it, you can see this package count here of 635. That That's minimal. And that has three window managers installed, maybe even four. So I, I installed DKI3, BSPWM, and, and DWM. That's three window managers. And all of them, including everything that comes along with the system, only added up to 635. Um, and, you know, I'm not really wasn't surprised, but that's still pretty damn minimal. Uh, now this is Arch Linux, so you're expecting all the latest stuff. I chose ZSH for the shell during installation. You can choose between uh, ZSH, Bash, and I think Fish was there. I'm not, I can't actually remember. Uh, it has the 6.22 kernel, which is the latest one that it, that is stable. And most of the, all of the window managers use ST as their default terminal. So it, uh, I would, if I were to use this, I would change that absolutely immediately. I can't stand ST. So that is arch labs so moving on to the rest of the questions that we have to answer so is it good if you like arch linux you're going to like arch labs now the question i have and i can't answer is why would you use this instead of just using arch linux now it's possible that you prefer a more guided installer arch labs provides that so with arch install all you'll see is a like itemized list basically of things that you have to do right it's not very guided Right, it does provide you some instructions, but it's very much still you have to have quite a bit of knowledge about the things you need to do in order to use it. It's better than it's used to be, obviously, but still you have to have some knowledge. Arch Labs is a little simpler than that in that it explains things more and it's much more guided. It takes you through step by step, do this, then this, then this, then this, and then have an installed system. So that's one reason why you may want to use it. Another reason why is perhaps you just prefer this look and feel. You you want a very minimal version of Arch, and this gives you that with a very minimal look and feel, and you don't want to deal with any other customizations or whatsoever. You're just into minimalism, and that's what this is. So it's a little bit easier to install, has a very minimal look and feel, is very minimal in terms of package base, and it gives you a lot of power during installation and obviously after installation of what's on your system. So maybe it doesn't have as much customization there as arch does i mean it does but whereas with arch all of your stuff that you want to install almost always happens after installation so this gives you some guided tools to select things that you want to install whereas arch really doesn't uh, so is it good i would say again yes if you, if you like arch linux arch linux is good this is good it, it, it feels a little bit like a cop -out. like should i say this is fantastic like it's it's arch like that's it's literally what it is and i will i will say that i like the fact that all they offer is window managers i'm a window manager guy so i prefer that kind of thing but if you are also a window manager kind of person you'll probably like this too but most people who prefer window managers are just going to install their configuration files and at that point the the arch labs look and feel will go away so that probably doesn't pay, play a lot of role into you know who this is for so that kind of moves us into who this is actually for and the answer to that question is i don't know who this is for because who would use this when they could just use arch linux and have all the power and it, it really does come down to that installation the installation is a little bit more guided whereas arch install is much more do it yourself so those that's really the bottom line is it good yes who is it for people who want a more guided arch linux install i should say and people who prefer absolute minimalism but with a pre-configured look and feel i should say I, I guess that's the best way to to say it i guess i don't i don't know arch labs is a little bit confusing for me because i'm not sure why it exists now um i maybe it's a a developer love project that they this is theirs that's what they use and they just are happy to share it with people and there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of distributions out there that just started off as a thing that the developer wanted to have for themselves and they decided to share if, if that's what this is, that's fine. And it's very, very good. It, it's Arch Linux with a guided installer. That's basically what this is. And that's perfectly fine, right? Uh, if this was meant to be more than that, I don't see it. But I don't think it was meant to be more than that. I think that's what this was meant to be. It was just a distribution that was released, you know, by people who wanted something that looked, 
felt and installed just like this. So if you are an Arch Linux person, but you don't feel like installing Arch Linux, you want to have a little bit more of a guided install, a little bit more of a structured post install with, you know, window manager or, or a pre-configured configuration of some kind of window manager. Arch Labs is something that you might want to try. So that is it for this video. I apologize for not being as nearly as organized as I probably should have been. I lost my notes halfway through. So uh, I'm pretty sure I answered the question, is it good and who's it for like four times in this last like four minutes or something like that. So I, must, I apologize for repeating myself over and over again. Hopefully I can pull some of that stuff out in editing. That'd be really nice. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on Arch Labs, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well if you'd prefer to support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, again, broken record there at the word very. I don't know what's going on with that. It's just one video after another i keep doing that stuff anyways thanks for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time